the new one. Okay, good morning, everyone. Do you see me or no? There we are, admit, admit. Why, oh, did. Did you log on as the. I log on, but now since I'm in there. Okay, who, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. I'm in. All right. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Entrepreneur Class. Good morning. Okay, I guess we had two two meeting invites, but we're gonna problem yeah. solve this. So just an FYI. We have um, Mel Andrews here on deck. AKA Andrews. AKA Andrews. Okay, we're gonna open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time we could be together, Lord. Our Entrepreneur for Christ classes is in your honor. And I thank you that we get to join together here in, in one accord, Lord, as we learn more about business in our wonderful country, USA, Lord. I, Pray that you bless each one of us that are attending and help us, Lord, as we move forward in our progress. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Again. This is my cue. There's your cue. You're on. Good morning. Um, today we are on thisforchrist.com. You can Get more classes at thisforchrist.com, B I Z number four, C H R I S T.com. Welcome to EFC class. And this class is How to Form a Company. I would like to thank uh, Skyline Church for having me and EFC leadership. Kathy and Anton and Carlos. Um, what to expect? The program is supposed to be 15 minutes class and 15 minutes um, connecting to other entrepreneurs about their businesses and how to help each other. And this is a intro class. We're going to talk about a general differences about stru business structures and why they want to build an en entity such as LLC or corporation. And lastly, we're going to talk about steps on making a company or entity. And we're going to go to an example. Intro, all about me is I'm an entrepreneur as well. My aim is to Bring a positive community. So everybody, such as you, all the interviewers can work together to build a better place. And I believe also I'm a proudly patriot and will defend for it. And I would, I would like to thank everybody who's in here and the church as well and this class for being a patriot. And and my mission is to provide a safe and secure access for the platform for my organization corporate. So what is the differences of the business structure? <clears throat> and for all of those who are here, you can chat with us and raise your hand if you have any questions. I want this class to be an interactive class, given, given of the numbers, and openly say what you want to say, just raising your hands or in the chat, and sharing your input to help us grow, and to help me and help us to get and learn about 
businesses. So sole proprietorship, what is that? Um, a single person can actually have their own business by being a sole proprietorship. It means that you're alone. You, you handle it alone. Um, anyone here who has sole proprietorship? Um, so what is the best, um, the best thing about sole proprietorship? Well, theoretically, the person has total control. Mm -hmm. That's an answer to anybody else. And that's good, that's bad. So you have sole liability, you're it. <clears throat> exactly. And what if I decided to brought another uh, person? Then you have a partnership. Then they would have a partnership. You know, so, and of course, you've got to get along with your partner and make decisions jointly, and that has its own stressors. Because you can't do decisions unilaterally. What if I brought another person to a partnership? Is it called a partnership or a corporation? It's called a partnership. You just have more partners. So it doesn't matter how many partners you have. It depends how you file it. <clears throat> so another one is LLC. Limited liability company will go more in that and detail in general and corporations. This is more of like the C Corp and S Corp is more of like a tax structure. And you can learn that from another class by going to Amanda class on taxation. You can ask Amanda for tax purposes. I'm here for a general info on how to, to build a business or an entity. Limited liability or LLC and corporation is considered as an entity. So we're going to talk about why do you want to build an entity? So first, based on rules and regulations, it will, it will be different on each state. And you must follow, always follow the federal laws. But, but based from my experience, do not take a word for it. You must research all the time. You must learn all the time. Because laws are changing all the time. So I encourage all the listeners on this class and for other class, do your research. Always do your research. Ask questions. Yes, ma'am. Is there a certain amount of liability by law that you have to have as a business? Is there a certain, certain dollar amount for the liability that you have to have for the law of business? That would be more of like a tax tax question. But, but it's it, insurance, right? Insurance, correct. The minimum amount of that is, I think. Covert is a million. Yeah, for errors in emission. You, you can buy always insurance to protect your business, but it doesn't mean you need one, but you can always do that. But I, for one, don't um, sell insurance or promote insurance, but You'll have to do your own diligence as an entrepreneur because being an entrepreneur is always to learn every day, adapt to the situation, and focus on your goal no matter how many bumps you have. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> if I join a franchise, I'm joining a corporation already. Correct. Well, it depends on their contract. You, you, if you read their contracts, it will all depend on what they say and what you agree with. Well, what about family-owned business? Family-owned business, usually it's a partnership or an LLC. Right. Okay. It always depends on the contract. They always put us so many pages of contracts. 
And I don't believe in that. I believe in straight um, business deals with no um, no words, so many words that you, jargon words that you don't know of. I believe in straightforward contract and straightforward answers, but they do that just because you have a loophole on it. Based on my experience, the more pages or the more complicated stuff that contract have, it's the more loophole that have, uh, have it. Yes, I, I took a communications class uh, maybe three months ago. And one of the things that they said was Google has a 1537 word contract. Right? You're supposed to read through <laughs> Yeah. What about, okay, now, yeah. Okay, you asked, I was just going to say, is the best place to get my license to be a vice administration? Business license? Business license depends on what field. For example, if you want to become a barber, you want to do a barber's license, right? So it all depends on what area you want to go to, but it doesn't mean that you form an entity by doing that. You will become a sole proprietorship without doing any paperwork. So all the structures that we mentioned, partnership, LLC, incorporation, there's a paper form to file into that. Where does that file get formed? What form get filed? Usually it's on Secretary of State, whatever um, state you are. For example, if you are in Wyoming, you'll go to Wyoming of Secretary of State and file a, an LLC or a corporation. But for a certain license, you are, well, for a certain license, you're already considered a sole proprietorship without filing an entity. Normally you get a DBA. So a DBA would actually make you a separate entity. So sole proprietorship. Normally you're not doing, you're not practicing under your own name. You have like whatever best coffee or you know uh, the, the best flowers or something so you would register you're doing business as with in, within your county. Yeah, it's like a alias is exactly, yeah. exactly yeah. very well said. Fictitious thing. Fic yeah. You, you can do it on the books, like authors do that all the time. They have a, a ghost name and their own real name. And artists do that also. They have their stage name and the real name. So you can always do a DBA for your sole proprietorship. So entity, it's treated as a different entity because it's a different, per se, a virtual person than you. So it requires, just like we said, it requires a separation of business and personal finances for some structures. You can, you can build a system into it because it's designed to be a system and a structure in the first place. You, have, you, can, you can do an asset protection on it, and deductions for the sake of this class, I'm just gonna focus more on the entity itself. I'm pretty sure there's disadvantages of it and advantage for partnership and sole proprietorship and different laws into it. But for this purposes, I'm gonna focus on entity. So it's very flexible, it can be transferable, aka they call it perpetual duration, because when all shareholders die, they're just gonna replace it. The entity itself keeps going without the owners itself, the original owners itself. I don't know about DBAs when you die. Well, I mean, the DBA, but you're, it ceases to exist. So that it's not, a, you haven't created a separate entity. Mm -hmm. By the way, Melandry is very knowledgeable in this area. So, for example, you got sole proprietorship or, uh, or partnership. 
when the owner die, the business will die, but they can always transfer the customers and stuff. But it's not, technically it's not the same anymore, but for the entity itself, it will be the same. It is the entity itself. So it is designed to be a perpetual duration. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, well, what he's saying is if you have a partnership and one partner dies, theoretically, the entity would continue on with still living partners. And generally, if you have a partnership agreement, the, the living partners will buy out the, the dead party's equity. If you have an agreement, if not, you may just literally lose that equity. Right. So that's why it's easy to set up and scale. And right now we have a new regulation. It's called, if you look it up, Regulation A plus under Security Exchange and Commission, it allows you to, to have a shareholders without being on the market, like the NASDAQ, pink sheets and stuff. So you can literally raise your money in exchange for your equity without going to the second dollar market via regulation A class. So that's gonna be a different class, A class. So EFC is just a brand new group and we're continuing to building it up. So once we build it up, we're, we're gonna talk about regulation A plus and other um, topics within the business. So are there any questions? Okay. Different kinds of entities, LLC versus corporation versus non-profit. So the LLC is on taxes has a limited protection on tax structure. But you can always convert it to S Corp. And that's for other class for taxation purposes. And, and to maintain an LLC, the tax is treated as a self-employment rather than rather than um, a corporation itself, it will require some tax for dividends. That's why a lot of companies prefer it, um, a corporation to be an IPO. It's because of you can do a structure for it via shares. You can always do it at an LLC, but you need to convert your LLC into an S corp. So just like I said, um, laws are changing gradually. They can always convert whatever structure you have into whatever current law right now. For corporation, of course, it, it maybe have a paperwork requirements in some states. For non for profit. Um, it's a tax exemption, so there's a lot of regulations and laws that you need to comply for that. So for maintaining a non-for-profit, you need an annual report. So going to the steps on making a company, uh, I, I made a three-step rule. Number one is choose a state. You want to Make number two, get a registered agent. Number three, go to the Secretary of State of website and file your business. So number one, again, number one, choose a state. Number two, register your agent. Most state requires you to have one and some don't. So I urge you to do your research and know, know your laws. 
Now, B, create your corporation to their website or proceed to step three, which is go to a website that allows you to have a registered agent at the same time with filing taxes. I would rather choose that because it's a two in one deal. You don't, you don't have to go to another step, which is step three, go to the Secretary of State and file your business entity. And lastly, we're going to form and register your new business. So I'm going to do an example for it. This, this class is for how to form a new entity or business. For example, I choose state of Wyoming. I will search engine it, Wyoming registered agent. Then Um, or, or choose between these three, register, register an agent or form a company for 150 with the register agent. So I'm not, I'm not sponsored by it or any, in any form. This is just an example. You can, you can choose any register agent or services that you want. But for this class, I will use this as an example. So you can build your registry agent, for example, $25. Then you'll go to the Secretary of State to form your business. Or they have a package right here, form a company. At the same time, they are your registry agent. So I'd rather choose 150 just to be over with it. So again, I'm not a sponsor of any of these sites. This is an example. You can do your own research. And after that, if you decide to um, do it in your own, get a registered agent, just like we, we saw earlier. Then go to a, the Secretary of State website. For this example, it's Wyoming Secretary of State. You'll go to business e-filing for for or register a business <clears throat> and start now. So their filing fee is this much, 100 for LLC, 100 for profit corporation, 25 for non for profit and partnership for 100. Click start now, choose the business stock you want. For example, I choose profit. Next. And click next. There you have it. And choose a name. Confirm the name and the last, the hardest thing that you will do is coming up a name. And that's it. It's, this concludes our class. I hope you learned something and you enjoy. I'd like to thank everybody in the class. Thank you. You, you are a good patriot. So important reminders, read your business state laws, especially business corporation app. Get after that, get your employment identity number or EIN on irs.com. IRS then don't forget your minutes and bios of the company. With that being said,
Jesus says, rise and do not be afraid. God bless and God speak. Do the registrators keep up to date with the state law like in Wyoming? Do the registrators keep updates with the state law? Yes, they do. And they have a services if you look into it. Well, the one who will do it for you. But if you didn't pick that one, then you'll do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay frosty. Any? Do we have any questions from our participants? Do we have any questions from our participants? Okay. So I hope we're all enjoying our Zoom EFC class. Remember to invite other people that might be staying at home and we appreciate everyone that's been a part of our class and God bless everyone. We're gonna close in a quick prayer and Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time we could be together, Lord. Bless each one of us as we uh, go to our homes and families this evening, Lord. I just pray for our nation and those that couldn't be here today, Lord, and, and you know um, we want miracles to occur in our nation and for our, our eyes just to stay on you as we know that um, you are in control of each one of us and the leaders, Lord. And I just pray that we just become servants for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. And next week we have Craig. Craig. Raise your hand, Craig. Yay. And do we know what we're speaking on yet, Craig? Yes. Uh, Carlos has tasked me to give a class on divorce, the dissolution of a partnership. How do you protect yourself? in California. It's a very interesting topic, I have to tell you. Actually, very challenging. It's very interesting. And uh, I really uh, thank Carlos for actually coming up with the idea because it has a business aspect. Yes. You know, when people get married, they're actually business partners. Yes. Uh, contrary to public belief. So the, the world sees them as business partner. In, in this, again, in the secular world, in the religious context, they're, they're one, but Society use them as business partners. So how do you protect yourself? How do you maintain that partnership healthy? So that's very interesting. So anyways, I got to give credit, Carlos. At first, it was a, a little bit of a stretch because I said, wow, boy, that's an idea. Uh, what do you do? So, Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to that. And God bless everyone. And always um, keep in touch on our website, bizforchrist.com and register if you haven't already. And again, share share this with friends and family. Also, we have a new U, YouTube channel and we hope to give that out to you next week so that anybody that hasn't seen this presentation, they can still participate. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thanks,